sponsored by CanadianModelRailroad.ca and by donations from patrons like you. Further support provided by the biggest little hobby shop in Winnipeg, Frogs and Diamond. And now on with the show with your hosts, uh, Peter and Joe. Well, Peter, what time it is? It's train time. Episode 54. 54? Which is October. Of, yeah. Uh, we took the summer off. Yes. And October is late. We yeah. got technically two show in October right now. Yeah. Uh, this one is a special show. Yes. This is the official opening ceremony of uh, 2747 Shelter. Transcona Museum. Yes. So you were there. I was there, yes. Uh, so without any further ado, let's, let's go to that special report in regard to, of the grand opening of the shelter. Yes. ceremony of the shelter for 2747 um, with the uh, Transcona Museum and today is the official opening you can see in behind me is the shelter and the locomotive so we will be uh, tuning into the official opening very shortly well, good morning everyone uh, if I can have your attention I think we're gonna get started now my name is Rick Walker and I'm the president of the Transcona Museum and it's my pleasure to welcome you here today to the official opening of the CN2747 projective structure. I would like to acknowledge a few special guests that are here today, but before I do that, I would like to start by acknowledging that we are meeting on Treaty 1 territory, the traditional territory of the Anishinaabe, Cree, Oji Cree, Dakota and Dene peoples and the homeland of the Métis Nation. I'd like to recognize a few special guests that are in the audience today. The Honorable Nello Altamar, MLA for Transcona, and the Minister of Education and Early Childhood Learning. Nello. Mr. James Tietzma, former MLA for Radisson is here. I thought I saw him earlier. There he is over there. There's members of Bill Briarcliff's family here today, so I'd like you to just wave to the group here, if there's any, uh, please do, yeah. One of them is from all the way from North Dakota, so a long way from home, thank you for coming. And Bill Briarcliff was one of the early volunteers who spent countless hours doing restoration on this project, on this train, in the early days. And there's a lot of history there. I heard a few stories even at the beginning here. So if you get a chance to talk to the family, I'm sure they have more that they'd share with you. I don't know if uh, Jim Tran is here, the Winnipeg Transcona Rotary Club. Is he here? I didn't see him. Okay, a few housekeeping uh, notes as well for those that need. There's a few seats still in front if anybody does need a seat. Uh, there are members of the Transcona Museum board walking around with a t-shirt like mine and with a name tag. If you haven't picked up a program, they are handing out programs or can get you a program. And if anybody needed a bottle of water, they could get you a bottle of water as well. Uh, we do have souvenir bottles of water and pens inside the structure and you can, you're welcome to pick up one of those after the ceremony. As you can see in the program, for those of you that have one, um, we have several dignitaries with us today and we'll be speaking. Following by, we will do a ribbon cutting. And after the ribbon cutting, we have some plaques to hand out to some of the donors to the project. Following which there will be an opportunity, if you haven't already had a chance to do so, to go inside, uh, to see the train up close, uh, to go up to the cab, and certainly to take pictures and ask questions of the members that are here today. Before I call upon our speakers, I do want to say that on behalf of the Transcona Museum and the CN2747 subcommittee, we are very excited to be here at this point in the project. It's great that it's finally come to fruition. 
So after many years of fundraising, weekly meetings and decision making, this beautiful new structure is finally complete. There's so many people that we want to thank and recognize for helping us get to this point, starting with our museum curator, Alana Vreda. Alana's there, and Peter Martin, both of whom are the co-chairs of our campaign and uh, through their leadership have done so much for this project. Our current members of the CN27 Working Group, Peter Alana, Jennifer Maxwell, who's the assistant curator, Jack Moore, Darcy Robert, Dan Morier, and Marie Rougeau, who are here as well. It was my pleasure to be able to work with them on that committee, and they did a great job. And all the past members that served on that committee. There were people that served in the past that helped us on that working committee as well. And our incredible volunteers who work on this train, led by Jim Colson. Where's Jim? Jim is here somewhere. I saw him earlier. Yeah, Jim? There he is. Hi, Jim. They put in countless hours working on this train all the time, are still doing that. They put in over 800 hours since 2018 fixing up the inside of this train. And you'll see some of that when you're, when you're walking around. I do want to also thank the designer and builder of this structure, Thomas Design Builders Limited, specifically Kyle Kostinek and Jeff and Trevor uh, Miller, who are for their vision and for the creation of this structure. I think a couple of them are here today. If you are, would you please wait? There's the eye. Thank you very much for coming. I'm sure I've missed somebody, uh, I, but I, I, I do apologize. I just want to conclude by saying we are grateful for all who have given of their time, their skills, and their donations to bring this project to, to completion. And with that, I would like to ask Peter Martin and Alana to come forward and say a few words. Peter and Alana. Thank you, Rick. Thank you all for being here, and thank you, whoever's in charge of this climate, for bringing this for our beautiful day. And I mean, Peter Martin, I've been on the board for a number of years, and it's my pleasure to talk about the structure. Now, first of all, things like this just don't happen. They just don't pop up and get built and sit in the park. This would be just an open field if it wasn't for the hard work of a lot of individuals. So I'm going to briefly take you through the process and the steps of those who had this vision to bring the project here. So um, in 1926, there was the first steam engine built in Western Canada built in the CNR shops by CNR people, by Transcona people, the first one ever. And uh, after it was taken out of service in 1959, there was a lot of requests across Canada for communities to get these old steam engines into their community because of the piece of the past they wanted to highlight. And a lot of requests were turned down by CN. First of all, a scrap metal in those days in 59 was worth $6,000, and they wanted to make sure communities had insurance and all kinds of stuff. So it was unlikely communities were going to get an engine. But in Transco to Kiwanis Club, they received the charter in 1958 and in 1959 and 1960, they created a project to get the steam engine from Transcona and build a park around it. So they fought for that and they developed a plan and CN agreed to give them the engine and it was moved to this park. It was actually driven into this park with a spur line and it was because of the Kiwanis Club deciding we've got to get that engine for Transcona. Now, there was 36 members in the Kiwanis Club, but I have a, a few that I want to acknowledge because you'll recognize these names. And these are people who did a lot for Transcona in many areas, and many did not know, did not know that they were also part of this. So you hear names like Mr. Bilodeau, who was a chief police, Thomas Copeland, R. Hughes, Harry Margolis, Paul Martin, C.R. Notley, Harry Supra, Joe Terrace, J.S. Wallen, Bernie Wolf, and others, and Mr. Reverend Owatson. These are names you remember about Transcona. They had a vision of doing something that would last for years. If they were here today, they'd be so proud to see that their vision is coming to pass, and this engine will be available for others to see. And uh, an interesting fact, the word Kiwanis in the Kiwanis Club is trans translatable to we build from the Algonquin Native American language. So it's an Algonquin word, Kiwanis, we build. And we did build and you helped build. Now in 1981, the Kiwanis transferred ownership of this engine to the Midwestern uh, Rail Museum. And then, and I think there's somebody here who's representing you, Val, raise your hand, Val. 
and her husband, she's the president of the uh, Miss Western Rail Association. They, they took this engine and uh, they owned it. In 2015, Lauren Tyson, who couldn't make it today, was our president, and him and I, I was on the board, and we said, you know what? We gotta try to get that engine into trance, gonna fix it up. We can't do anything on it because we don't own it. So uh, Lauren asked me to negotiate with CN, with the Midwestern Rail Museum, to purchase this engine. It took me almost nine months back and forth making promises I didn't know I could keep. I said, we can find the money, we'll build the building, we'll do all this stuff, trust me. He said, well, we can't afford anything, so if you can do it, we'll give it to you for a dollar. I believe I took the dollar out of my pocket and gave it to him. Maybe not, it doesn't matter. <laughs> so we took ownership officially of the engine. And then we thought, oh, what have we done? And then uh, we spent a year, the first year, and I'd like to mention Jack Toad, I don't think he's here, but he led the committee. I, I was president at the time, he took over the committee. And we came up with a design after a year or two, and this we couldn't do much more with that. We need to get costs and stuff. But Jack and his committee, Louise Hedman is here, Murray Ruger was here, he was very involved, and, and, and others on that committee. And then we hired a Atlanta arranged for this GP Heritage. She said, let's find out what's really under that engine. So we had them do an assessment, and they said, if you don't do anything in five years, this will be gone, you'll have to take it away. So that and he gave us a guide, a schedule of the order of things that needed to be done to protect the engine. That was Atlanta's guide to schedule all the work that needed to be done. And uh, again, the, I, I co-chaired the project, but it was Atlanta who found the money. And thank you, COVID, because we did find money that wasn't there if it wasn't for COVID. So thank you for, you know, for, for this. So we found all kinds of money. But as you can imagine, the work that's involved writing the story and going after the money because you really believe in this. Um, and then one of our better decisions was asking Thomas Design and Builders, take over the project. We can't manage the project. We don't have the expertise. And that was a savior because they did things that uh, really helped the project. They handled everything. We didn't have to worry about it. Well, then just worked closely with them. And Kyle Kostnick was did a phenomenal job of trying to meet our needs. Now, at some point in the project, we, we realized we, know not, we may not find the money. In fact, I believe I told Darcy, Darcy, I don't think I'm going to see this building in my lifetime because things are going up in price. The price of steel went up 130000 from when we started the project. They weren't going to find the money, but we came through. And, and my favorite ad is that we all believe in, it doesn't matter whether you think you can or you think you can't, you're absolutely right. We get thinking, okay, we can do it, we can do it. You folks and the businesses and the community and the government came through. Um, and this is in Rotary Parks. I'd like to give a shout out for Rotary. And then I know there's some representatives here and they really supported us financially and, uh, and helped us out on this. And especially now, Bill Briarcliffe, he painted this engine three times. He was up on ladders painting, spray painting. He raised money. And he gave that money, he raised a rotary, he donated that back to the train. But Bill Quiles and his family, he really believed in history. Now, so anyhow, I'm really proud to be part of this. I'm really proud of where we are today. I'm really proud we can see this building and that the youth and others can get up inside and personal inside the cab and see the workings. And with our tremendous volunteers, we'll have it restored slowly and slowly. And as we get more money, we'll be able to add some stuff to it. So the fundraising is the capital campaign's over, but the nice and fuzzy stuff we want to continue doing is going to continue. So thank you all for your support. Thanks for being here and, uh, and enjoy the tour after a pen and, and the water. So thank you. And I'll now turn this over to Alana. I want to thank everyone who's joined us here today on this I can't believe we got a sunny day for this event. Um, it's so wonderful to see so many people here to celebrate the official opening of the 2747 with us. Um, you all know its importance to our community and to our city and to Canada and that helped us actually be able to make this project a reality. The 2747 officially joined the collection of the museum in 2015 and I remember when we were announcing that I put a little hint out on social media saying we're going to need a bigger boat as in we don't this isn't going to fit in the building. Um, it is our largest, our heaviest and our longest artifact and it's even longer than our building. We knew we were never going to move it, that this is its home, it has been this 
in this location since 1960, but we have worked hard to take care of this iron horse since 2015. Our goal from the beginning has been to preserve the engine and take it back to what it looked like when it came back into the park so that future gen generations can learn about its importance to the community, uh, our city and to Canada, but also that they can learn our history of overall of Transcona. From the condition assessment that Peter mentioned, performed by GP Heritage in 2017, there's been a lot of other work that's also happened. There's been welding repairs, there's been glass cleaning and repainting, the many, many hundreds of hours that our volunteer crew have put into um, preserving and repairing this engine. To today, to the opening of the structure, we have done so much for the 2747 but our work isn't done, um, which some of you might have already noticed if you've gone in, if you haven't, when you go in, you'll see that there is still more work to be done. Um, so while the cal capital campaign has been finished and completed, we are still working towards uh, preserving the engine and there's still much more to do. Uh, the crew is working on repairing the floor in the cab, the, the benches and the seats need to be repaired, dials and, and levers went missing over time. Those need to be repaired or we need to get replicas. The original number board, as you can see, is not on the engine. So we need to find the original or make a replica. So there is still a lot we need to do for this engine. So continuing what we started with the capital campaign, with every donation that is made to 2747 uh, preservation, 10% of that is going into our endowment fund for the future maintenance and ongoing care of this engine. Because just because we're opening this today does not mean that we are finished. Our work continues. So thank you for joining us today as we celebrate this amazing milestone for the museum and the engine. And we look forward to your support as we continue to work on the 2747. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you very much, Peter and Alana. It's now my pleasure to call upon the MLA for Radisson, Jalen De La Cruz, to bring greetings on behalf of the province of Manitoba. Jalen? Slightly more vertically challenged, so I'm just going to adjust this before we kick it off. Good afternoon, everybody. It is such an honor to be here with you today. As introduced, uh, my name is Jalene De La Cruz, and I am the MLA for Radisson. Uh, many of you may be thinking, you know, Radisson, aren't we in Transcona? Well, I can proudly say that as the MLA for Radisson, I am also the MLA for the GTA, which is the greater Transcona area. So I'm honored to bring greetings today on behalf of the province of Manitoba at today's event and to cross this over the finish line. Though while I say cross it over the finish line, as Alana mentioned as well, this is far from being over. While you know this entire community got on board thanks to the hard work of the good folks of the Transcona Museum, it's time that we ensure that the train keeps chugging along. So I would like to thank the Transcona Museum for allowing me the opportunity to be here today for this very special event on behalf of the Premier, the Honourable Wab Kanu, as well as my colleagues in the Manitoba Legislature. The Premier is unable to join us today but sends his regrets. On behalf of the Manitoba government, I wish to begin by honoring the sacredness and importance of this land and of the ancestors that once walked where we are standing to today. The Anishinaanawak, the Anishinaanawak, the Dene, the Dakota, the Métis, the Inuit, and the Anishinaabe nations have all paved the way to what is now known as Manitoba, home to all treaty people. And in acknowledging this land, I'd also like to acknowledge just how fantastic the weather that Creator has bestowed upon us today truly is. As Alana will remember, probably my very first or one of my first interactions with the Transcona Museum was not quite so. <laughs> um, it was maybe one of the, I think, the veterans tours that we we'd done and Alana was our tour guide. Um, it was, you know, um, amid COVID as well. So we were wearing our masks outside and it was wet snow and windy and our masks were getting soaked. And so there are many, much worse conditions that we could have been in today. So thank you, Creator, for blessing us with this beautiful sunshine. Thank you once again to the good folks of the Transcona Museum for this invitation and for inspiring each and every one of us 
each and every attendee and each and every supporter who did not um, or was not able to make it here today to continue to be champions, to continue to be relentless advocates in order to preserve our history and to continue to ensure that these stories are available for generations to come. I am so proud to see that the CN2747, Western Canada's first ever steam locomotive, has a new protective enclosure to commemorate and preserve the history of Transcona's workers. Years-long efforts by dedicated board, volunteers, and museum staff have ensured that this important piece of Canadian history, made here, right here in Transcona, will continue to be a part of our community for generations to come. Even to this day, Manitobans from Northeast Winnipeg make significant contributions to our province's economy, building a province that I and folks of many walks of life are proud to call home. The steam locomotive is a grand symbol of what Transconians do best. Here in Transcona, we work hard, we help our neighbors, and we do it all together. The 2747 moved the product of Manitoban skilled labor from producers to customers to fill needs throughout our nation catalyzing our local economy and establishing Manitoba as a central trading partner across Canada, one that is truly irreplaceable. It's thanks to the hardworking Transconians that Winnipeg was defined as a railway city, making railway life an important part of our community's past, present and future. So once more, I would like to thank the Transcona Museum for the opportunity to join you today and congratulate you all once again on the, com on the completion of this work which has been so important to so many for so long. On behalf of the Manitoba government, please accept our best wishes in your continued work to promote and protect Transcona's values and community spirit. Thank you all. Before you, before you go, um, we do have a small gift. There's a creation of a token of appreciation for the province of Manitoba and the contribution to the project. Thank you very much. We are, we are very pleased to have the Mayor of Winnipeg with us today, Mr. Scott Gillingham, and I'd like to ask him to come forward and bring greetings on behalf of the City of Winnipeg. Well, good, everyone. good morning, everyone. It's just such an honor to be here. Thank you. It's great to see you. Uh, great crowd today, great to be back in Transcona. Thank you, uh, MLA Cruz, for your comments and for uh, the Treaty Land Acknowledgement. Thank you also to Rick and uh, the entire team, uh, Peter, Alana, all of the board members and all the volunteers. Can we just give a round of applause for all the volunteers who have made this possible today? Thank you so much. To all the donors as well, thank you. We wouldn't be here without uh, without your contributions. It's great to see Councillor Wyatt. It's good to uh, be here. He uh, leaned over to me because I live in St. James. He said, "Remember, now it's it's trains, not planes." And I thought that was pr pretty good. Thank you, Councillor Wyatt. Uh, good also to see uh, Daniel Blakey here, former uh, member of Parliament. Uh, thank you so much, and Adam Beck as well. Uh, also good to see former member of Parliament Lawrence Tote and former MLA James Tietzma. Good to, see, uh, good to see you here as well, and to all the guests, and especially to the members of the Transcona community. I'm really pleased and honored to be here today at the opening of this enclosure. And the City of Winnipeg is proud to have supported uh, this project through the Land Dedication Reserve. And of course, the CN 2747 locomotive is an important part of uh, Transcona's railway heritage and Winnipeg's railway heritage and holds a special place in our history. And this protective enclosure will help ensure that for future generations, uh, this uh, locomotive can be enjoyed by many and it can be preserved from the elements and all the hard work that so many have done and I hear will continue to do, uh, can be preserved as well. I've got to tell you today, uh, one of the things that excites me most is there's a little guy here, a little person here somewhere, just a youngster running around with a backpack and a hat on and I looked out and thought, this is about that generation and future generations, to continue to tell the story uh, to the next generations of people that live in or come to Transcona, and all of Winnipeg and all of Manitoba, about the importance of, um, of the railway in our community. And that's what this is about. 
preserving the CN2747 for future generations so that they too can learn to appreciate and understand the importance of our railway heritage. It serves as an educational tool and for a source of, as a source of pride for our community. And you may know that this year Winnipeg is celebrating our 150th anniversary as a city. And it's impossible to tell the story of Winnipeg without telling the story of Transcona. And you can't tell the story of Transcona without telling the story of the railway. Which is very fitting because our theme for our Winnipeg 150 celebrations is our shared stories and our shared future. And so I think it's very fitting today that we are just celebrating the opening of this enclosure and looking ahead to more work that needs to be done and to continue to, uh, to, to tell the story of our community. It gives me an opportunity as well that uh, Councillor Wyatt and I and all of Council share uh, an appreciation for the work that museums do across our city and certainly the, the, the Transcona Museum Board and all the work that we do tells yesterday's story but it points us into tomorrow as well. So thank you to all of those who work in and volunteer for the museum as well. I want to close with this. As part of our 150th anniversary, uh, what we have done at the City of Winnipeg is we have opened up a nomination program for Winnipeg 150 medals. And the Winnipeg 150 medals will be awarded to 150 Winnipegers who have made positive contributions to their neighborhoods and to the city as a whole. So we're encouraging all Winnipegers to nominate uh, those friends and neighbors and colleagues who exemplify the spirit of Winnipeg, the spirit of promoting our city, uh, in building our city, and our, uh, uh, which, which we kind of rep uh, represents our, our vibrant and diverse communities. The recipients of the Winnipeg 150 medals will receive a medal, but they'll also, uh, will also plant a tree in their name and in their honor in one of our city parks so that their contribution can, uh, can be recognized for generations to come. So if you have someone in mind that you think would be a worthy recipient of a Winnipeg 150 medal and this recognition, Please go to our city's website, winnipeg.ca forward slash 150 years, and you can submit their nomination online until uh, the nominations are open until July the 15th. So a few more weeks to go. So again, thank you so much for the opportunity to be here. But thank you again for all the work that uh, every one of you has done to make today possible. Thank you, merci, and good. My father's birthday today so when I got the invitation I thought oh what a wonderful home that uh, that this opening is happening on my father's uh, birthday and he would often remind me that that my grandpa was involved in the planning of the line that they had to build in order to bring it into the park and I know he's talking to Nello earlier he said his father was on the crew that did the work to bring the train in and I think there's a lot of folks in our community that have a story of attachment to this engine so when I got a call from the folks at the museum at the time to say that things were getting real, the museum was acquiring the train and there were big plans afoot to restore it and protect it into the future. I was really excited to be able to be a part of that effort. And of course that effort was starting up around the same time that CN was celebrating its centennial. They were doing events here, but they were also doing events in Ottawa. So I went to one of their Ottawa events for the centennial where I knew the board was gonna be there. And with Alana's help, we prepared a really nice kind of two pager pitch sheet and we had one for every member of the board and I went and made sure I got introduced to everybody and put it in their hand and then was happy to follow up when they uh, when they renamed the, the the CN training center on Pandora a couple of the CN big brass were in town one guy in particular who I'd hoped might have been able to make it here he's not with CN anymore his name's Sean Finn he was a vice president at the, at the time so when he was in town for the renaming of the training center I was invited as the MP at the time and grabbed Sean and brought him here. The weather was not like it is today. It was a rainy day, but I knew he was a bit of a history buff and so he was willing to persevere. And we walked out here in the rain and I showed him the engine and explained 
um, you know, just how important it is to our, to our community and how sad it was to see it being chipped away at and how important CN could be in making a contribution that would be seen because it's a very visible uh, area, but also uh, be an important part of that ongoing relationship between Transcona and the CN. And so that was some of the work that I was happy to do as the MP for the area and somebody who really loves this. And, you know, I think it is a testament, not just to, but it's a testament to many things. But I think when you come here and you see it, you appreciate what it, how important it is as a historical artifact, but also the work ethic of people in Transcona that made this happen. First to build it, and then to see it generations later, the people who got involved and were willing to roll up their own sleeves and put in the work to help preserve this when funding was scarce, and then to have the vision for this and to work together, whether it was in 1960 or whether it was in 2015 and, and in recent years, to get this done. So it's an artifact that means a lot to me and I know it means a lot to all of you. It's why you're here today. I'm really proud of the work that everyone in our community did in order to make today possible. And I just want to thank you all for being here to be a part of this important moment. Thank you very much. Thank you, Daniel, for all your support with this project. We couldn't have done it without. Finally, it's my pleasure to call upon the corporate sponsor for this project, CN, and their representative, Adam Beck. And Adam is the senior manager at the Transcona Shops. And this project would not have been possible without the support from CN. Adam? Okay, uh, good morning, everyone. My name is Adam Beck. I'm the uh, senior manager of Transcona Shops. I'm very proud to be here today and uh, represent the employees that are currently working there today and also the past employees. On behalf of CN, I'm very pleased to be here with you as we recognize the official opening of the CN 2747 Protective Enclosure here in Rotary Park. 98 years after it was built, just down the road at the uh, CN Transcona Shops. Gathering here this morning represents an incredible journey and a lot of hard work by many community members with an interest in restoring and preserving the impressive piece of Canadian railway history built right here in this community and having it rest here for the next generation to, appre to appreciate and engage with. That was actually my son over there in the CN hat. Yeah. Thank you to all of you who have played a part in making this happen, uh, community members local of, uh, elected officials, current and former CN employees, and the Transcona Museum. CN is proud to have been a, uh, to have participated in this project and is an important part of the company and this community's history, one of which we have been a part of for over a hundred years. Today Winnipeg continues to be the hub location on CN's 20,000 mile transcontinental network, home to the Transcona shops, Simonton Yard and National Training Centre and our 2,200 employees in Winnipeg who develop the next generation of railroaders. Operate our trains and do the work that keeps them moving efficiently in delivering critical operation and mechanical services. In closing, CN has been proud to be able to support this project, turning the community's vision for the preservation of the CN 2047 into this reality. Thank you. Before you go away, we have a small gift here as a token of appreciation for all the support from CN and their corporate sponsorship. Thank you very much. Okay, folks, we're getting close. Uh, uh, if I could now ask our speakers would come back up, we're going to do a ribbon cutting uh, and I'll get them to stand in the front row. We're just going to move a couple things around. And I'm also going to ask all the Transcona Museum board members all of the uh, 2747 working group members and our volunteers that work on this train to come up as well. And I'll get you to stand in behind our, our uh, guests here today uh, for part of the ribbon cutting ceremony, okay? Thank <laughs> you. 
So that concludes the formal part of our presentation. I did want to recognize one other individual here though too. Mr. Larry Vicker is here and Larry was instrumental with providing support for the maintenance uh, campaign, the, uh, the endowment fund for, uh, for the train. So uh, we appreciate him being here today as well. Thank you everybody for coming. I hope you'll get a chance to come inside and see the train. We are also going to be giving plaques to specific donors. So while people are mulling around here, I'll just read out the names of some individuals when the train stops. <laughs> Okay, wow, that train was closer than I thought. Um, just give me a minute. Sorry. Okay, when you hear your name, if, if an individual or their company representative can come up to the front, right by the side door here, uh, Alana will present you with a plaque. So, uh, the Winnipeg Transcona Rotary Club, is there a representative from the Rotary Club here today? You could please come to the side. Kaysera uh, Credit Union Limited. Uh, is there a representative from the former Kaysera Credit Union here that might be able to come forward? Western Financial Group Communities Foundation by a Wyatt Dowling Insurance Brokers. So if there's a representative here. The Canadian National Railway Historical Association. If there's a representative. Transcona Biz Improvement Zone members. Is there a representative from the biz today with us? Uh, Border Chemical Company Limited and the Winnipeg Foundation. If you have a representative here, we'd love to have you come up to the side door here. Oakley Alarms Limited, great contributor to this. certainly didn't have a shortage of speakers. No, there was lots, lots of uh, formality, lots of speakers, um, pretty good attendance. There was a lot of people, you know, brought lawn chairs and mm -hmm. sitting around or standing around. So, yeah, it was, um, it was good to see it uh, finished and open. I see. So in a way, folks, uh we got uh, episode uh, 55 coming up right right after this one so uh, i hope you enjoyed that show and we wish and we hope that you go and visit that shelter because it worked a trip yeah you'll have to uh, check with the transcona museum uh it's not open all the time i think it's you have to arrange a viewing with the museum if i understood yeah, properly. Matter of fact, being a good uh, school trip. Oh yeah, yeah. Uh, for school kids, uh, groups, yeah, there's uh, just have to get a hold of the Transcona Museum and, and arrange for for time. And just in passing, keep donating. You know, yes. they, they still they're still having some fundraiser there. Yep. So uh, till next time. See you later. Happy modeling.